Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another fun, fast Tinkercad tutorial. So let's get cracking. Friends, we're starting on my website, hlmodtech.com. Of course, there's a Tinkercad tab and tons of awesome categories. Today's going to be a design to print day. I do want to highlight, though, the day one favorites, the useful starters, the Tinkercad essentials, and the built-in messaging tool. This is where I got the question that got us started today. Let me show you what it is. Kathy mentioned that she wants to create channel letters and wants to do them completely in Tinkercad. Let me show you the idea that I've got. So Kathy mentioned that she wanted to fill them with what are called fairy lights. These strings kind of remind me of what you'd put on a Christmas tree. Here you can see several applications I found on Amazon. I do not have any of these, but you can get the idea of how they are strands that you can slide in these channel letters. She did mention she wanted to build it completely in Tinkercad. So real quickly, I am in Tinkercad. There's create and let's hit 3D design. I always start by renaming it. We're going to call this channel letters. And I'm just going to use this text right here. There is, of course, a script font that you can search for. I've got mine saved as favorites. I have to click more a few times to find my script text. There it is. It does give you more fonts, but for me with these channels that I'm trying to build, I think a straighter system is going to be more efficient. I also have a tutorial that shows you how to bring in really fancy text from Canva. I will put a link up here and show you how to do that as well. The thing that we really, really need to make sure we have, though, is the channel where those lights are going to go for each letter. So let's make our cool channel letters. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my word. I'm going to do HLMT which is one of the abbreviations I use for HL Mod Tech. I will look at these other options. Sans is the straightest. Sans Mono is really the same. And Serif really goes back to the one we had for the multi-language. I do like the thickness of this one. I'm a little worried about the edge over here. I'm going to just stick with this for now, though, as we experiment. If we find out that this doesn't work, I'm going to recommend using the other font or something cool you find on a program like Canva and then bring in. The secret ingredient to this project, though, is right here. Whatever text you pick, we're going to choose Export, and we're going to export as an SVG for laser cutting. I'm going to just save it to my downloads. It already has the name from the project. At that point, I can delete this because I won't use real text anymore. I'm going to simply import that exact same file. There it is to bring back. We only want the art. I'm going to keep the measurement and choose import. Now, friends, as you know, that was crazy easy. But here's what it gives us. At this point, I'm going to just stretch it out to a much larger size. So if I was making a sign right now, this would be 8 centimeters tall. It'd be 17 centimeters wide. I'm printing all of the letters at once. You may, depending on the size of your printer, you may want to print one at a time. And this is the default fill mode, and it would be the back. I'm going to choose to make the back of this 1.5 millimeters thick because we want that color to be able to come through. I'm just guessing that would be a good thickness. And then we're going to do Control D, and now we're going to make the channel. We'll check this out. If we switch to outer line, and we make it one millimeter thick. So I'm going to hit one and press enter. I'm going to switch to round and I'm going to make the quality as high as it'll go. This is the channel that we need. It's that easy. If I stretch it up, bingo, you can see your channel. Now, of course, we'd also need the top. So we're just going to click on the bottom one, do control D, hit W click on the top and hit D for drop there are your channel letters now you would likely want this pushed in so all we do remember it's one and a half so we can drop it in a crazy amount but then over here change it to negative 1.5 so it's lined up exactly that is how you make your channel letters now you need a way to get the cables in there all right, so I'm going to hit work plane, and I'm going to click this blue edge so we can see what it looks like all together. I'm also going to switch to cooler colors just because it looks nice. I'm going to go out and make that a light purple. I'll make this white just because I want those colors to go through. And, of course, I'm going to do the same thing for the back. All right, so there it is, colored. You're probably going to print it all 
all one color. I'm just playing around because I'm not printing. Of course, we need a way to get the lights in here. I'm going to do it simply like this. I'm going to go back to my basics. And I'm going to cruise the whole cube out onto this shape. And I'm just going to cut it in. I'll make each one of them custom. Of course, we've got to push it in a little ways. And then I'll want to make them lined up. But I'm going to just do Control D and nudge this down till that one's perfect. And then if I don't touch anything else, I can do Control D again and again to get them to their ish locations. And then I can just come out here and make them each permanent. So the eye would be this one. This one would be this tiny little M's middle. Notice I am dragging the black handles. It's really easy to line them up exactly with the part that we're playing with. Up to you on how wide to make these. You could do the whole L right here or part of the L. I'm going to stay just like that. Let's pan and slide over here and quickly fix this one as well. Once again, if you use the black handles, it only goes in one direction, which is quite a bit easier. So that would allow us to slide the little string cables up each one. They would have to go up and back. I think snaking it all the way around would be pretty tricky. If you wanted to do that though, you could cut holes up here as well. So the cables could go through. That might be a real interesting experiment. I'm not sure if it would work with how skinny these channels are. We'll have to see once I get a chance to print them. Now I do not want to cut into these, so I'm going to lock them. I want to lock the one in the back, so I'm going to hide this one so I can see the one in the back. And there's my padlock of that. Now I can quickly do show all to bring everything back. And let's line these up. If I select everything, because these lock, because these are locked, they won't move. But now I can do L for a line. And I do want them lined up this way. So that way those little holes we're cutting in are exactly in the middle. Once again, I'm going to select everything. It tells me there's 10 shapes here, but really the two white ones are not selected. So if we hit group, it just cut all of these holes in so that we have access. There you can see our channels. And if we click on the white one, you can see it is still alone and locked. Friends, it's time to build a base. We are going to use this for part of the base. So do Control D. Let's move it over here. And let's ungroup it. Now we're going to take these holes that we put in, which will fit our letters, and we're going to make them so they're solids. This is going to be super slick. I'll show you why in a minute. Right now, though, simply turn them into solids, select it all again, do group for that so those pieces actually stay existing they'll just pop through make the entire thing a hole and then let's stand it up 90 degrees always look at it from a corner and then we want to stay inside the shape so you can rotate 22 and a half degrees at a time or you can hold shift and it goes 45 degrees at a time i accidentally let go too early i'll just do Control z once again, look at it from the corner. There's my rotation. Shift rotate, two clicks, and it's standing up perfect. The last step is to do D for drop, and then we'll bring it back in a minute when we've built our awesome base. Well, let's quickly search for the awesome soft box. If you type soft, this will pop up really quickly. Bring it out, drop it down. Please remember, we're typing properties. Do not change the handles because that breaks the properties. If we click this real quick, see how it is 185. So for us to make a base, let's go larger than 185. I'm going to make X 195. So I'm leaving room on both sides. Wait for a moment for it to turn into the base that we want. We need to make this distance larger. If we click on our shape, we know that our part right here is 17 millimeters. Once again, this is probably going to be too thin. You'll have to modify that as you determine what your printer can do and how large your strands of lights are. But I'm going to click on this and we're going to try 50. I think five centimeters would be a decent base to hold a project like this. And then I'm going to choose the thickness of that base. I'm going to choose three millimeters thick. Now I do want this base completely filled in. So I'm going to take the walls and instead of three, I'm going to make it 25. That way it goes to the middle and it actually makes a base. Now to make the walls, we're just going to do Control D, 
put the work plane right here, press D to drop, and now we're going to go back to this wall. I want the walls to be two millimeters thick, press enter, and just like that you've got the walls of your base. This will be where you can put all of your plugs. Now we need to change the height. Let's say we want it to be 30 millimeters high. That would be where all the components sit. Of course, you can adjust this depending on the size of your lights. And then we're going to put a cover on this. Once again, W for work plane, set it right on top. Let's click that old bottom, do control D and D for drop. There's your top. Now the top needs to hold these. So we're going to change this height. Let's instead make this six millimeters thick. Friends, this is where it gets pretty darn cool. Let's do show all to bring everything back. Here are the letters that we built. We want to put them on top. So work plane goes on top of our shape. D for drop. And then we need to align it. I'm going to shift select the lid and those letters choose a line. We want the lid to be the master and do center and center. That looks really cool. Now we're just going to sync it through. Control down arrow several times until it's down with the letters poking in. So I just went two clicks below. There's three millimeters into my six millimeter base. I'll click somewhere else and we'll shut off the work plane. You can see how that's going to be sitting in there just a bit. And then if we do shift select and control G, we will all of a sudden have the place for these to sit in and the holes for the wiring to go underneath. How slick is that? So real quickly, before I would ever 3D print this entire project, because it is pretty large, and I would print this piece, but only part of it. Simply use a hole to cut off everything but these bottom pieces and make sure they fit exactly the way you want. Depending on how accurately your printer prints, you may want to adjust that. So I would do small pieces before I do the entire thing. All right, everybody, here comes one of my favorite parts. We're going to make this so the back can open and close. It is so slick. If we go back here, see the 195 and the 50 in the wall of two. We can make a part that presses in there and has a bit of friction to hold it in place. Watch how easy this is. Remember 195, and we're going to take away two plus two or four on each side. I'm going to make this piece transparent so we can see inside. I'm going to look inside and I'm going to put the work plane on that inside. Click on the very bottom piece, do control D and D to drop. So right now it exactly matches those walls, but if we subtract the four, so I'm going to make it 191 and actually I'm going to do 190.5. So there's a little bit of slack. And of course we've got to go over here and subtract the four to get to 46, but I'm also going to do 45.5 to once again give a little bit of slack. I'm not quite sure what the perfect number is for the friction, but I'm going to choose four just because I think that gives us a little bit more grip as we close it. And then the final step is just to grab everything, do L for a line. I do want to make sure one of my main parts is the center so that it all stays lined up and look at it from a corner and find this one too. And check it out, those two parts are going to slide in so we've got a back that can open and close. I'm going to put the work plane back down on the ground. Let's hide this for a moment. Now we can select those two and do control G. So they are a piece that we would print. And then of course if we do show wall, we would also print these two pieces together. Of course if you wanted to make this piece able to come off, you would just do the same process. So on both sides of our channel, you could slide that in and out. Once again, when you start grouping groups of things, it gets a little more complex. You can see that took a little bit longer. I'm going to shut off the transparency, which is just the shortcut of T. And you've got a project that would be ready for 3D printing. These do need to be separate. I'm going to do D for drop to get that to the bottom. You'll notice it no longer fits on my build plate. You can fix that by going to settings, 
and you could simply backspace and make it 300 by 300 so you had more room to play. Real quickly, I'm going to select these two. Do L for a line and get them back to the middle. And then I would export each part to the 3D printer separately. Export STL. And I would just label them with something like channel letters A. And then, of course, base bottom and base top before I send it to the printer. Now, at the moment, I'm traveling, so I can't test it. But you can see, I think we got a pretty slick way to make our awesome Tinkercad channel letters sign. Really quickly, I'm going to show the world what we built. I love being able to publish Tinkercad creations. Here's how easy it is. The first step I always do is to change the background. I'm going to go with the light pink. I'm also going to ditch the grid because it looks a little more epic. I'm going to actually leave the parts like this in the design, but I'm also going to build a version where they're standing up for a better image. When you are done, though, you simply return to the Tinkercad desktop. Click on the awesome little gear and choose properties. Of course, make sure it has a name that you like. Of course, in my description, you'll notice the tutorial is coming soon. Also, I give you a quick shortcut to see the new HLMT23 shares and cool ways to reach me. Now, friends, when you tag it, if you ever tag yours with HLMT23, I search that tag every day. You can see everybody's shares up here. And of course, I will give you a reaction. Now, finally, make sure you change it to public, and then I always choose attribution, no derivatives, because I want you to come up here, follow that tutorial, and gain some epic skills. Of course, you do need to prove that you're not a robot, and then at the very bottom, hit save changes. Of course, friends, here is a look at it standing up. We've got a removable bottom. You've got holes to put the lights in through there. And of course, I made the front transparent so you can see where those lights would be. I think this is going to be absolutely epic. And once again, I want to say thanks again to Kathy for the suggestion. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course, friends, you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.